it's really hard to build a sustained audience if you're not going to be there regularly. Building an audience really builds on itself. Hey everyone, welcome to Bright and Early, the podcast for people building early stage startups. I'm your host, Brian Ray. I talk to entrepreneurs, product people, designers, and marketing pros about their experiences during the early days to help you feel just a little less crazy. My guest today is Kelly Miller. Kelly is the author of Get Attention, Brand Building for Startups. She's a communications strategist that works with both large corporate organizations and early stage startups. Kelly is also the co-organizer of Tech Rebalanced, a DC-based hackathon and training day for underrepresented genders in technology. Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. It's no, it's my pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for for responding and and coming on. I can't wait to hear uh, everything that you've got to to share for us. When I came across your site um, and read a bit about the book that you've written, I thought this is this is absolutely perfect. And so I can't wait to uh, can't wait to hear more. Great, yeah. And your audience, um, these are the people that I want to reach. So this is great. I I think I think so. So yeah, audience, we'll just go ahead and mention getattention.co. <laughs> uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to check that out. Uh, before we before we really dig in. Um, I want to ask, what is your favorite podcast that you're listening to right now? Or what is the last show that you binged? Oh, great. Okay. Well, I am a huge podcast fan. And um, my kind of listening goes the whole range from um, I, a couple comedy podcasts. I'm really, um, I really love Tim Heidecker's uh, Office Hours podcast right now. He's a comedian I admire and laugh at a lot. And then I also, um, I, I really like um, the, uh, what is it? It's Side Hustle School, or it's uh, kind of the side hustle of the day. I forget exactly what it's called, but I, I listen to that very often. Um, and I also, um, another of my favorites is just the startup, um, the Alex Bloomberg story, which yeah. was, oh man, that, that was one of my favorite shows of all time. Every single season has been different and excellent. And, um, I had tears in my eyes when I uh, heard the news that they sold the Spotify. It was just such oh. a crazy, cause I felt that I was along the ride with them. It was just very yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. T- tears of tears of joy or tears of fear tears, that things uh, are going to change so I, much? for me for me it was it was tears of joy um i yes. it, i i, oh, I, 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 I hear you. yeah i i trust them i trust both of them um the founders to kind of for, for what that decision was um and also it was it was also just I just know what kind of stress they were under towards the end. And so I, I'm assuming that they'll have a little bit uh, off their backs, but hopefully still kind of taking active leadership positions within. Gimlet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved the first several seasons at mm-hmm. some point I, I kind of fell off and I, I forget, I, I can't really put my finger on which season it was that I stopped being such a, an obsessive listener to that show. So what had the past season or two of that one been like? Um, so they, so they've had one, one was very interesting where they were, and I don't remember the name of the kind of competition, but it was like this kind of hackathon, build a company in a couple days competition that took place on a bus on several buses that were leading to one central place. And so they just had a reporter on the bus following um some of the companies and it was very funny it was kind of the height of blockchain and everyone was going to do something <laughs> on the blockchain yeah, um, of course. yeah but um but that's been great but what i've really enjoyed recently are the kind of check-ins with gimlet they'll usually do those in just kind of one to three episode stints um and those have been very very interesting uh, okay me. yeah I'll, I'll check that one out have you been listening to uh to build your SaaS? No, I haven't. 
Okay. Um, p- people are going to be rolling their eyes now because I, I think that I have mentioned this every single episode so far, uh-huh. um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's great. It's Justin Jackson, uh, who's who's building Transistor.fm, which is where this podcast is hosted, actually. Yes. But uh, they, they started it like a year and a half ago. And it's basically like, you know, uh, micro, you know, the, the startup podcast. It's it's them building their podcast hosting you know, platform and you start with them from $400 MRR and today they're at around 12 K. That's great. It is, it is so much fun. Yeah. I've heard nothing. Wonderful storytelling. I know I've heard nothing but great things. I'm a huge fan of Justin. So it's been on my to listen uh, list for a while. So maybe this is the push that will finally start with episode one. Yep. Check it out and start from episode one. That's what, that's what I did. It's been, it's been a fun ride. Great. Well, hey Kelly, uh, tell us what are you what are you working on these days? Um, so I so kind of to back up a little bit from there, I I wrote the book in about thirty days. Well, it was actually in exactly thirty days. So um, so that was kind of what propelled me into this kind of world of independent entrepreneurs. Um, I was a member of Women Make um, only kind of shortly before then, and that's an organization. Um, uh, pretty much on Telegram, there's also a newsletter um, and a solid Twitter community. Um, run by a lovely woman named Marie and, um, lots of digital nomads there. But so I joined that group about a week before they had this kind of build something in a month. It was the just cuss word effing, uh, ship it challenge. And so I like it. uh, Yeah. So, (laughs) um, so I, so for a while for that entire month, it was just, um, building and writing this book. And so ever since And so that was also just really, again, got me kind of introduced to this very exciting world, which led me to, um, to, to learn about people like, uh, Justin, for example, and to meet people like yourself. So, um, so that was just in October. So since then, um, so since I launched the book, I, um, I've also, I've just kind of been reining in my love of working with especially early stage founders. Um, so I'm advising early stage startups. Um, you'll see very recently I launched, um, office hours, um, on my Twitter, um, at Kelly F mill. Um, but I I did see that that is, and I, I, immediately retweeted it. I was like, this is super cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Oh no, of course. It's, um, it's, it's what I love to do. Those are the, whenever I met these kind of happy hours or networking events at DC, I end up just talking to one founder and they probably want to get away from me after about 30 to 45 minutes because I I just, I love, (laughs) I love, I love chatting about that stuff and just kind of learning about this journey. And, um, and what I found is that a lot of people, um, you just get so kind of hyper focused on your product yourself. So you really need the communications help, but, um, we can get into that in a a second, but what I, so what I'm working on now is kind of continuing to connect with founders and help them with kind of their communications journey, their everything from PR to marketing needs. Um, and also, um, have, so I, so I advise a couple companies, but then also through office hours and then, um, in the, in the fall or in actually kind of late summer, I'm going to, um, work for, um, I'm going to be a, an advisor for a cohort at Benetta project in DC, which is an organization that I really admire. It's, um, it's kind of a capital platform that connects, it kind of connects funds and then these promising female founders. So that'll be a more in-person endeavor, whereas everything else has kind of been digitally. Um, so that's kind of in the, in, in one bucket. Um, and then also I, I definitely want to kind of keep growing the book. Um, a lot of feedback that I certainly got was um, that people found the worksheets very helpful. And that was almost kind of an afterthought after I had kind of written the book in this 30 day fury. And like um, yeah. yeah. And so, but, um, but one thing that I've heard over and over is how helpful the worksheets are. So that's definitely something that I, is kind of on my, uh, on my radar for next steps is to kind of build that out um, to kind of make, well, we're- make something more hands-on. Yeah. What, what were people saying that they found most helpful about them? I think it's just with communications in general, so many people are just starting with a total blank page syndrome. It's they, they know their product in and out, but they don't know how to talk about it. And, and what the worksheets did, it, was, it gave you a good starting point. And so, and I think that there is just a lot of, um, a, a lot of different aspects of your brand and of your communication strategy that can be 
really just kind of Q and A and you just have to have the right questions. You have to be asking yourself the right questions. And so that's where something like a worksheet will come in. So I'd yeah. love to do more of those. Yeah, I feel like that's that's something that's so, I, I mean, when I do product consulting for people or the, the sort of thing that you're talking about right now, I feel like that's one of the really helpful things, especially for solo founders, is be, just having somebody else ask the question. Yep. It somehow gets the knowledge that you've already got dug down in there, but you it's just almost impossible to objectively ask yourself the right questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could see that being, I can see that being super helpful. Yeah. It's really hard to take a step back again. It's, I mean, especially technical founders where you're not only just kind of in the, what does my product do? I mean, you're in the code all day. And so <laughs> yeah. it's just it, yeah. it like, there's really no, I mean, that's just, it, it's such, you're in such the microcosm of what your product can how your product can help the world. And so it's really easy, I feel like, to just get kind of distracted and um and a little bit too caught up in um the details rather than big picture. Yeah. Right. So you you do you work mostly remote with your clients or you said you're starting to do you do some one on one or sorry, not one on one, but you do some in person yeah, work as well. Yeah. So so I also so so my day job is also I, I'm a communication strategist at Banner Public Affairs. And so that's where I work with kind of usually larger corporations. Um and so and so a lot of my work there is, you know, I, I get pretty hands on with my clients. Um and, and a lot of them are DC based, but they're also kind of around the world. But in terms of working with startup founders, um in addition to the kind of um, to the more sustained projects that I have with DC based startups, I um, I'm it's it, a lot of that is digital um, and and a lot of it and especially just outside of the US, um, that's been a great thing about Women Make is getting to know all of these independent entrepreneurs that are living these amazing digital nomad lives in Bali and the south of France for a couple examples. So yeah, amazing. Well, so, so let's talk about that work that you're doing with with startups um, I, I, and, and early stage companies. I can speak from experience on trying to launch a number of things. This is something that Claire Solentrop in a previous episode uh, that we talked about was just how crowded the space is becoming mm-hmm. um, because, I mean, the, the barrier to entry to launching a SaaS is is lower, is getting lower. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, business ownership should be democratized. But I mean, a common problem is like, how do I make people care (laughs) about my company? How do I, so what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. um, I really like that question um, actually. And 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 what it made me think of is, um, is this woman, Anne Lore, who um, is the author of the book, Make and Shine. Have you heard of her? I'm curious. I have not, but I'm, I'm jotting that down. Um, yeah, so she is amazing. I, I was connected with her through Women Make, and we actually were the two people in that um, in the cohort that were um, writing eBooks at the same time. And they, there was a lot of overlap. For hers, were more about, about building a personal brand, and um, and very kind of targeted to the independent entrepreneur. And one thing that she really stressed a lot, which I thought was very smart was um, building in the open and just really leveraging a community, whether that's digital or in person. And so if you're kind of talking about how can I get people to care about my project, um, it's really just starting to kind of scale that those one-on-one conversations, like the one that I mentioned earlier, like the happy hour, how it's just so fun to talk to these people that are passionate about their own projects. Um, And so what does it mean to kind of work in the open? It's and this is something I did when I was writing the book is I just had a Twitter thread of every single day I wrote what I worked on. And you see a lot of people doing different iterations of that. I mean, Justin does a lot of that. It seems like you do a lot of that. Um, and I think that that's a really good way to kind of get people involved. Um, um, and then the other thing is why they should care is kind of just thinking of this question in a different way is... Um, if your company description is specific enough to tell them why to tell your potential customers why it will help them, then they're going to care. Um, it's, I mean, you're right. It's a crowded space. There's probably a lot of companies doing very similar things, but um, I think what your job from the branding and communications and what will ultimately help shape the best product is that you want to focus in on your unique value proposition keyword being unique. Why are you different? Why are you better? And what, and how are you helping people? And so if you can kind of 
succinctly tell people, this is what my product or my software or my company will do to help you, I think they will care. I I love the idea of building in the open. And Mm -hmm. I completely agree that, that letting, bringing people along on the journey as you tell your story and tell it well, it just builds so much, you know, personal trust and connection and et cetera, et cetera. I, I think though, one major obstacle that a lot of people have in committing to that idea of building in public, um, two things come to mind. And the first is uh, having it damage your cre- that your company's credibility early mm. on. Like mm-hmm. if you're talking, well, we have 11 paying customers. Um, ugh, like I'm really worried that, you know, some uh, a potential customer is going to come along they're getting ready to sign on and then they're then they see that we have you know we've been transparent about our numbers oh my gosh that that could turn them off um and then the second is like fear of consistency like can i can we really commit to keeping this up and are, are do we want to do we want to give resources to to this part of of our marketing strategy or whatever do you have any thoughts on those two things um damaging credibility and maintaining consistency Yeah, definitely. So for damaging credibility, I think that everyone has a different comfort level with the kind of amount of information that you do want to share. I have a great amount of respect for this kind of open startup project. And I was just geeking out over reading all of um, Peter Level's stuff uh, yesterday and how cool that is. But so great. It's amazing. But I mean, you're right. It's like, that is probably the best case scenario. scenario. I'm sure there are many that have kind of tried to go that route. And then it ends up kind of, um, you know, it, it might be damaging to your credibility in some way. One thing is that that's kind of part of the idea of doing that is it's an accountability thing. And, um, and I, and I, and I do think that part of that is just kind of this leap of faith is like, Hey, I'm, if I'm going to build this in the open, I'm going to have to build this fast and I'm going to have to build this in the right way. Um, and so it's kind of, that's part of the process is the fact that it's open and it could, there's the potential to damage your credibility. But also I think there's a lot, a lot of different levels that you could take with that approach. Um, for example, for the book, I, I haven't said anything really publicly about my sales numbers, but I still was very vocal, um, when I, for, for how, for, for how I described when I was building the actual book itself. And that really truly did help for when I launched is that I had a lot of people that were following that thread every day or that kind of had seen other people commenting on it. And, um, and that it really did kind of help uh, build kind of a core of people who cared when I launched. Um, so, so I think that there's kind of a, a broad spectrum of the ways that you can kind of build in the open. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to share every dollar that comes in and goes out. Um, yeah. And then your second question, what was it? I, I forget. I'm sorry. Well, I, you actually, you actually addressed it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the fear of, you know, consistency. Like oh, what yeah. if we, what if we commit to building this thing? Uh, and then we, you know, we, we change priorities or like we don't have enough time to get to it or, mm-hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, you, you kind of addressed it in, well, yeah, uh, <laughs> if, if you do that, then it's going to, it's probably not going to go so great. You you need you, yep. the, the other, the, the side benefit of building in the open is that you are, you know, bringing on an accountability partner in the form of your actual audience mm-hmm. and yeah, sometimes things get hard and you you don't want to give that extra little bit to it and doing it in this way kind of holds you accountable. Yeah, 100%. And um and but but I really do like that question about consistency. That's something that I ask all my clients a lot is big ideas sound great, but I, the first question you have to ask is, okay, are you going to still have the bandwidth to be keeping this up in three months? So I, I, so I, I think that you're, you know, it's good to put it out in the open. And I think that that will kind of help you stay consistent. But, um, but I also, I, I really like that you're thinking about that because you can't do everything. Um, a, a lot of what kind of my book actually talks about is, you know, there are all these changes channels available to you for, for, you know, for finding your audience, but let's focus on the ones that'll work because you might think, Oh man, it'd be great if I was on Pinterest. That sounds awesome. But there might just be kind of a small segment of your audience that would find the information that way. And you, everyone has bandwidth issues. So if you can't post to Pinterest success, like consistently, 
then skip it. So, so I, I do really like that you're thinking about that. Hey everyone, it's Brian and we'll get back to the interview in just a bit, but I wanted to let you know that Bright and Early is brought to you by Techstars Studio. Techstars Studio enables you to rapidly envision, validate, and launch disruptive new startups. Partner with the Techstars Worldwide Network to access entrepreneurial talent and a proven track record of helping the most promising startups succeed. For more information, visit techstars.com slash studio. And if you decide to reach out, let them know Brian sent you. What are some other, uh, some common mistakes that you see founders make in the early stages? Um, that's a good question. I think kind of ignoring communications and branding completely is is the most common. But I've actually been very pleased and kind of surprised to, as I've started to get to know this entrepreneur world, everyone knows that they should be doing it, but it's just very easy for it to just kind of slip to the last priority. And I completely understand that. I mean, your your product, your company is your baby, and it's it's kind of easy to fall into the trap of thinking, okay, if I'm not building, it's not like I'm being stalled. And, and, and if you think of building a brand as, oh, that means I have to pause my coding for the day. Um, I'm not going to be able to add this um, feature today because I have to tweet. Um, that's not the way that you should think about it, but I think that it's a, the way that a lot of people do. So I think that just people who get a little bit too focused on building out their product and not kind of finding their audience first, um, that's a big uh, kind of mistake that I see. And another to, to um, get back to what we were just discussing is consistency. Um, it's, it's really hard to build a sustained audience if you're not going to be there regularly, not necessarily every single day, but um, building an audience it really builds on itself. And then it could be, you know, the third time that someone sees your blog post or the, that you even post it, that you even see that you posted a blog post. It might not be until the third time that they read it because, you know, they've, they've got that familiarity with your brand now. Now they're going to read it. And then, you know, it might not be until the third blog post that they read that they want to start to learn more about your company. And then once they're there, it's, so being consistent is very important. And I think that it's something that a lot of people um, struggle with. Um, yeah. So let me, let me ask you a question about, you mentioned a, couple, mentioned a couple of platforms there. Would you advise, you know, early stage companies who are committed to the idea? We, yeah, we got to be consistent. We want to tell our story. Mm-hmm. We're going to build this thing in public, but we do have limited bandwidth. And so we are going to, we're going to be active on Twitter and we're going to have a podcast. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be writing blogs. We are going to ignore LinkedIn and Pinterest altogether. Or would you say, look, anything that you're putting on Twitter, you should just as easily put on LinkedIn and you can, can throw something on Pinterest. Is there a, is there a spectrum there of, do you you see what I'm asking? Like if you're going to be out there, Hey, be everywhere. Yeah. So the or first, is it okay to focus? So the first question you should always ask is where is your audience? So, um, so if, if you're building a product that, um, that for example, for Justin is trying to uh, attract podcasters, where are those podcasters? Are they on LinkedIn? My, my guess, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I don't, have any of that information in front of me right now, but my guess is probably not. So maybe there's some there, but, um, but if he's looking at other channels, like, you know, a blog where he can reach podcasters where they are from search terms, um, or just kind of the following that he already has, or the, the podcast about a podcast, um, like those are just channels where he's going to want to spend more of his energy. Um, and so, and, and, and that's exactly what I've seen (laughs) him doing. So it makes sense. Um, but I think that you have to tier, um, because it's very easy to get overwhelmed. There are so many channels and and I do not subscribe to the belief of if you're already posting for Twitter, you might as well throw it up on LinkedIn. That takes, that takes mental bandwidth to think like, oh gosh, I have to do that LinkedIn post. Maybe in theory it takes five seconds, but you know what, we have to make decisions of where we're going to spend our time and energy. And there's a lot of ways that that can kind of take up room in your brain. Even if, you know, it takes five seconds to write that post, um, 
that to have that in your brain every day when you wake up is that I, I have to post on 10 channels today. That's not how you want to be focusing your efforts. I think that you should find your kind of top two to three methods of reaching your core audience, finding where them where they already are. And that's where you should focus your efforts. I like that. It, it reminds me of exactly where I saw this the first time, but somebody was kind of expanding on the idea of product market fit Mm -hmm. and saying, you also, you also need to have founder market fit. And you're saying, you know, if my, if my, if I'm trying to build something and my audience hangs out on Pinterest all the time, but I don't know the first thing about Pinterest or how people are accustomed to, to seeing content there, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, That's probably not a great fit for me. I am probably going to fail at marketing. So I like the idea of what you're saying. Like, is your do you know your audience? Do you relate to them? Do you know how to talk to them? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. And do you know where so, to find them? Really? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Are so are there some companies or founders you think that are doing this super well? Um, I would say uh, Veni Kunchi at uh, Kunche at Diversify Tech. Um, do you, I, I'm not sure if you know her, but she is um, one of the entrepreneurs that I admire the most. Um, okay. I am, pre- I am pretty sure that she is in the mega maker Slack group she is. with me. She is. Yes. yes. I know. Yep. Totally. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is someone that I admired for a while and has also just become a great friend and it's just a, a, an amazing supportive person. Um, but she is very, very good at, um, identifying what it is that her company is doing and how they are helping the people. So for example, for Diversify Tech, her tagline is so specific and it leaves no questions. It's a collection of resources for underrepresented people in tech. Once a week, we'll send you upcoming conferences, scholarships, scholarship events, education, education scholarships, job opportunities, and more. And you know exactly what it did that's eloquent. It, it's, it's simple and it works. And, um, and I really like where she's kind of, and again, it's, it, she knows where to reach your audience too. She's very, very plugged in with kind of these, this beginning coder communities on Twitter and, um, and a lot, and a lot of this, these diversity and inclusion groups. Um, so she's really, really fantastic at doing that. That's great. I'll be sure to link, uh, to her in the show notes Yeah, and, I think I'll, I should reach out to her on Slack and see if she wants to come on the show. Yes, yes. Hey, so we, we've only got about a handful of minutes here left and just want to say thanks again for everything that you've shared. People, check out getattention.co and also find Kelly on Twitter. It's Kelly F. Mill with two L's. Yes, right, Kelly? yes. Uh, in, the, in the mill, of course, Kelly with two L's in the Kelly. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Kelly with a Y. Right. K-E-L-O-Y. Oh, yes, yes. Is, there's, there's a couple ways to spell it. <laughs> yeah. Well, as, as a Brian with an I, I, uh, I, can, I can relate to you. <laughs> on needing to, you got to clarify that from time to time. So uh, working on startups can make you feel just a bit nuts uh, from time to time mm-hmm. uh, if you don't actively work on maintaining your sanity. And so I'm just, I'm curious if there are any practices that you have found helpful uh, that you might want to might want to share with us. This can been asking this in a way that this can be anything on the spectrum from hey, here's how you manage your to do lists, all the way over to meditation and mindfulness practices. So, like, how do, are there are there any practices that you have found helpful that you would like to share? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, I try to walk every single day, and that was something that was really helping me and I didn't really realize it until um, I heard someone else saying how important walking to them was. It was, it was actually Ali Bradenberger, who's the uh, co-founder and CEO of The Bridge, which is a, um, they kind of connect innovators and regulators a- across the country. It's uh, bi-coastal, DC, San Francisco, everywhere in between. But um, she was on a panel one time and I was listening and she was saying how she just, it doesn't matter how busy she is, she just has to get out and walk for a while every single day. And it wasn't until she had said that out loud that I realized, oh, that's what helps me too. And so I've been very conscious of even on the weekends and I might be jamming on some project. It's just, I try to spend some time outdoors and just walking around. And sometimes my best ideas come to me when that happens. Do you, thanks for sharing that. Do Mm -hmm. you intentionally not listen to anything or you go with the flow? Maybe you listen to something, maybe you don't. I'll mix it up. Um, okay. so it, it, it's funny. It's I sometimes I'll just 
be 20 minutes into a walk and realize I never hit play on my, on my phone. And right. I'll be planning on listening to a podcast, but sometimes I do need that silence. But other times, you know, it's music, it's podcasts. It's, um, yeah, totally depends. Okay. Thanks so much for everything you've shared, Kelly. I I can sense it that we we've we've barely scratched the surface. Um, I think we could do another entire episode. I would love to to talk to you again later. And I'm so glad to have met. Absolutely, I'm so glad as well. So, how can listeners find and follow you online? Um, yeah. So uh, the book and a little bit more about me is at getattention.co, and then um, I'm on Twitter at. K-E-L-L-Y-F is in Frank Mill, M-I-L-L. So Kelly F. Mill on Twitter. My guest today has been Kelly Miller. Kelly, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. let's do a little bit of closing thoughts here. First is that after doing this interview with Kelly, I went back and found like the mini season of startup uh, on the startup bus. And it basically follows, yeah, it's a, it's a five episode series. And I think I'm halfway through the third one maybe, but uh, they, they put a bunch of people on a bus in New York and they are driving to New, New Orleans and, uh, and trying to, to prototype a business idea um, before they arrive in New Orleans where they will meet up with a handful of other buses who have been journeying from different parts of the United States and they will pitch what, they, what they've what they got done so far. And it's it's good storytelling. It's just like classic Gimlet stuff uh, and it's, it's pretty fascinating. Some interesting characters, uh, a lot to think about. So if like me, you you loved season one and then kind of fell off at some point, the little the five episode miniseries, I think is pretty, pretty fascinating. So from the otherwise from the interview, I, I'm i feeling um, what is what's the right like I, encouraged or convicted <laughs> um, to do some more building in public. I just in in, in the in the in that conversation and uh, in, even in listening back to it and just kind of chewing on it over, over the days uh, following, I just, I just completely agree the, with the, the, the notion of bringing people along um, on the journey. Um, a- aspects of it just do totally feel, feel scary or what, what pieces should you, what pieces should you share? Uh, what's too much? Uh, you know, that's, I think that's just things that you're going to, that you got to wrestle with along the way. I just know for sure in the people that I really enjoy following and have learned so much from, the more they share, um, honestly, candidly, the, uh, the the more trust it builds and the, and the more I feel like I uh, uh, respect them. So I, I would love, I'm trying to find a couple of more uh, companies um, who are who are doing this doing this in an interesting way, and uh, I mean, yeah, well, that just goes immediately right back to to startup, doesn't it? I mean, um, we like Kelly. I listened to you know the first season of Startup, and if you haven't, if you have not, and you really really owe it to yourself, um, one of one of the episodes, uh, Bloomberg is pitching Chris Saka. Um, S-A-C-C-A, uh, I mean, it's extremely well-known investor, and he fully, fully botches the pitch. Um, it, is, it is a hilarious and beautiful disaster. And I, I remember listening to that at the time and just feeling like, man, what a dude to be able to, to put this out there in the open. And, um, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just it's just crazy how how bad it goes and now fast forward a handful of years and and that company is uh, has had a you know a, a great rise um and an amazing amazing journey and and yeah they they've been sold to Spotify um not that being acquired is the ultimate goal um in their case that that was the path that they were on and and they they achieved that um so if a lifestyle business if a small business um, that supports you and or maybe just you, a Paul Jarvis company of one situation or a small team. Um, it's I, I, either way, sharing the journey, building it in public and, and growing your audience as you go. 
uh, it just it seems seems like the seems like the the thing to do if if it comes naturally, and uh, it's something that I I want to do a bit more of. Um, if would you yeah you guys hit me up. Um, you can either email me um, just at brian at brianray.com or you can get me on Twitter at b r h e a. Um, and are there are there besides like the usual suspects um, of you know building in public uh, companies and the bare metrics open startups page? Are there some that you're following that that you have have really enjoyed uh, listening to or reading? Uh, I would love to I really would love to, to to hear on that. So the other part when we were talking about you know related to building in public <clears throat> was she was. You know, Kelly was talking about this the the thirty day process of of writing her book that you can get at getattention.co, and how there was the the scary aspect of accountability and just you know ha- having that thread that she was posting to on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, that is that is scary. Um, or you may you may not be as consistent as you want. Things may not go exactly as you expected, but I I do think that the lesson in there is having some accountability, and uh, and just and being willing to go for it, and it is scary, and you might drop the ball, and it may not be pretty, um, but sometimes you just gotta sometimes you do just have to go for it. There will always be good reasons not to do. Something I I am a, I'm a firm believer in starting with no, <laughs> um, in in most things because you know saying uh, saying yes to something is saying no to a hundred things and so I I will definitely cop to starting with that as as the default position in a lot of things um, with the caveat being that uh, it's not it's not that the only things you should say yes to are the things that don't have any downside, you will be stuck in a rut. Um, you will be making no progress for a very, very long time if uh, if what you're waiting for is some idea that that seems to not have any downsides or um, or I mean, even even reasonable, expected, predictable downsides. Um, but I, I think you know the the benefit of of building in public, having that accountability um, in in your audience, is that it does sort of force you into movement, and uh, f- you know helps you start to build momentum. Um, it's it's kind of in it, I, maybe that it's resonating with me um, so much because in my in my personality type momentum. And uh, inertia is just such a strong thing. I feel like once I can get moving in a direction and build up that momentum and 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 positive, uh, uh, positive like m- uh, velocity and uh, and speed, I, I inside I, I really do. I start to feel unstoppable, and I have a tremendous amount of confidence, even though my, my skills uh, or experience in, the, in a particular thing have, may not have changed whatsoever, the mo- momentum uh, gives, me, gives me a lot of, of confidence um, and I'm able to, to move forward. On the flip side of that is, you know, if I'm at rest, if I am stuck and feeling that way, it's really hard for me to get moving, and that's just that's just an aspect of my personality that I've learned uh, learned about over the years. And so I ch- I'm, am you know trying to find ways to, to, to counteract it. So uh, maybe maybe that maybe that resonates with you. And so to relate that back, the the where where I notice myself having success, creating streaks building positive momentum is when other people are in it with me. And so that definitely means, you know, my, uh, my, uh, you know, my, in my, in my personal life, um, my, my wife, my closest friends, um, you know, and, and community groups in that way are in it with me. And what I liked, you know, that, that Kelly was sharing there, what, what resonated is you can build that accountability in, 
as as you're developing your audience, as you're building and growing your audience and your your people, um, you are you're accountable to them to continue to to do something that you've promised or to 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 deliver something that's going to improve their their you know their yeah, help them make some progress um, in their life or in their profession. And so uh, that a lot of that just deeply deeply resonated. Uh, with me, it's the th- it's the thing that has stuck with me since doing this interview, is just continuing to to think about um, built do- doing things more more publicly. Um, Kelly does this in a pretty cool way um, in a couple of different uh, with a couple of different projects that she's been working on, and so um, you should definitely check her out at Kelly F Mill um, on Twitter and uh, and check out her book at attention.co. All right, that that should do it. Uh, should do it for me. Please uh, let me know um, what you thought about the interview. What your what your takeaways were? Any of these closing thoughts? If you've got uh, any ideas on them, uh, let me know. You can find me at b r h e a on Twitter. That's b ray. And thanks as always for listening. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Listen, if you dig this show and you want to hear more, then please head on over to Apple Podcasts or Google Play and leave a review. It really is the best way to help other people find the show, which is great for my guests, which is great for the show, which then makes it easier to attract more guests. You see where this is going. So if you're listening and you think other folks should be, please leave a review. And if not for me, then do it for the extremely cool group of people who've agreed to be the first guests on my show, knowing that it's brand new with very little to offer them. Jane Portman, Claire Solentrop, Gia Lottie, Margaret Kelsey, Janelle Allen, Andrea Hill, and by the time you hear this, plenty more. These are all really busy people who already have an audience of their own and were so, so gracious to me when I said, hey, I'm launching a brand new podcast with no listeners. And here's what it's about. Are you game? And they said yes. So if not for me, do it for them. Leave a review, tell a friend, spread the word. And until next time, I'm Brian Ray.